Okay, so we discussed uh, that non-linear models can be more powerful than the linear ones, right? We discussed this example, then when data is not linearly separable, we can have a curve which is not linear and then it can separate the data. So today we are going to see these non-linear uh, regression models. So okay, this was a classification example, but we are doing regression at the moment. Okay. So, in the last class, we stopped somewhere here. We said that let us consider y. If my y is w1x simply, then it's a linear model, it's linear in w. But if my y is w1x and then a sigmoidal function, element wise sigmoidal function, then multiply it with another w2, which is again a matrix, and then uh, that is a, this is linear in w2 but nonlinear in w1. Now how do I estimate my W1? So very simple answer. We have one method which is not dependent on linear or nonlinear. What is that? Gradient descent, right? Other methods, they needed analytical solutions, but gradient descent is iterative solution. Does not, it doesn't matter whether you have, you don't have to solve the equation, right? You just find the gradient or the derivative of error with respect to Ws and then descend in the direction where error decreases. Right? That is the gradient descent. Now, we have some, uh, let us derive this. Uh, so I can write this matrix equation or vector equation in terms of linear element or in terms of elements. Let us say my, my y is a vector of dimension n2 cross 1. My x is a vector of dimension n0. W is n1 comma n0, right? Then multiplication is possible. Sigma is an element-wise sigmoidal function. And my W2 is n2 cross n1, so that multiplication is possible, right? It's simple. And I can write this whole thing in terms of elements as my W x i0 and W i1 i0 is this weight. Then sigmoidal function and then W i2 i1 and then y i2. Clear, right? This is very simple. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, starting from this equation, can I draw it? How do I draw it? I'll say, okay, let us start from x i naught. So i naught is the index for these different x values, x0, x1, x n naught. It, it could be phi or it could be x, right? Instead of writing phi i naught, I, I have written it as x i naught. Okay, don't be confused by phi versus i or versus x. Okay, so now uh, I have something here. This is w i1 i0 x i0 summation over all the i0. What is this? This is, let us, let me call this value as some h h i1. So this is my layer i1. I mean, it means every node I index with the symbol i1. Clear? Uh, so when my i1, so when I talk of this node, okay, I have multiple nodes there. When I talk of this node, it will be something like this. My h0 is equal to summation w w zero comma zero. Let, let, let me not put summation. Let me expand the whole thing to write uh, x zero plus w zero one x one plus w 0 to x2 plus so on up to actually it should be n0 minus 1 I'm sorry because we have n0 nodes there then this will be n0 minus 1 plus w0 n0 minus 1 x n0 minus 1 right and my so in general similarly similarly h1 h2 this is H1, this is H2, and I can go on up till H, 
n1 minus 1 right so uh, I have an interesting so story about this derivation so I was going I, I had gone for an interview so it was machine learning uh, scientist position so they asked me can you derive uh, optimization means optimal solution for any state of the art machine learning algorithm I said yes I can do it for neural networks and he said okay do it on the board like, for half an hour I was, was explaining him this derivation he was very impressed okay <laughs> so this is but this is very simple this is like a cakewalk it's so simple uh, but just pay attention and you will be done uh, I learned this in Professor Behra's course this is how he taught and I'm kind of repeating his thing um, this is uh, this is my HI1 now I have to apply a nonlinearity sigma let me call that as VI1 my VI1 is equal to sigma times HI1 right um, now I have to this is my V this whole thing is my V this was my H now I have to multiply V with another W so let us say I have something here so this is my Y0 my Y0 is equal to uh, <coughs> W zero comma zero. This is some different zero zero. Like this is not the same. This so let me call it as dash. W zero zero uh, V zero plus W zero one V one plus so on up till W zero N one minus one V N one minus one. Is this clear? Okay. So, in general, I can say my y actually the same thing. Y i two is equal to summation over w i two i one v i one summed over all i one. Right. So this is called a neural network. Uh, so, uh, okay, let me, uh, some quick questions. For this first node, how many unknown parameters are there? For the first node, for this node, how many unknown parameters are there? Raise your hands. Huh? I naught is, is an index, it's not a number. It's an index which goes from zero to n not minus one. Yes, n not unknown parameters, right? So the so i zero is constant. So basically, this okay. If you see here, it goes from zero to n not minus one. So it is n not unknown parameters here. This one has got n not. How many unknown parameters are there with this node? N not again. And in this way, every node has got how many total unknown parameters in this? Huh? N1 into N0. Okay. Okay. Now, um, you, you just studied in linear models, in linear regression models. It is always good to add a W0. What does W0 do? Uh, okay. Here I have named W0 as something else. Uh, so basically, if you have a, so your W is basically a classification boundary, right? If this, this was your Y is equal to MX minus, Y minus MX minus Z is equal to 0, right? This was the equation. What was this C doing? C was allowing this line to move away from the origin, right? So this is called a bias term. Why it is called a bias term? It is just convention. Uh, so basically, it adds a constant bias to the whole thing. That's why it's called a bias term. Uh, so what we do here is we can add a bias term plus W something uh, W I one. This is called a bias term. 
so which which we can also assimilate into my previous form by just assuming my means giving an extra dummy variable one here right and then it will be assimilated in the same form in the same summation term right okay uh, so now how many unknown parameters are there n1 into n0 plus 1 okay now coming to this one how many unknown parameters are there at this node how many unknown parameters are there at this node this is equal to n n ha huh? n1 very good n1 and if i add a bias term here plus a bias term huh n1 plus 1 okay good and like that i have got so many y's right this is uh, i2 so it goes from y0 to y n2 minus 1. So how many total unknown parameters are there in this layer? It is n2 times n1, sorry, plus, plus n1 plus 1. So in this entire network, how many unknown parameters are there? Total will be basically this plus this, right? Clear? The number of unknown parameters in the first layer multiplied by those in the second layer. Okay. This is an important thing because you will realize when you put actual values here, it grows to a very large value. Let us say you have 10 inputs and 100 hidden layers and 10 outputs. What is the size of your network? How many unknown parameters are there? Let us say you have n0 is equal to 10, n1 is equal to 100, and n2 is equal to 10 again. Then your total number of unknown parameters will be? Yeah, it will be a huge number. Like this will be 11 times 100, so means 1100, plus uh, this is? 101 times 10. So, 2110. Uh, so, in practice, in uh, like real world systems, means in the industry level neural networks, you have hundreds of neurons in one layer and you have multiple layers of that type. So, you can imagine now the size of your network or the number of unknown parameters will be really, really large. Like millions of parameters it can reach millions of unknown parameters. That's why you need huge amounts of data to train your network. Right? Okay. Now, how to find the optimal model parameters? It's very easy. Okay. Why? Because the form is so simple. Let us find out first the values of W2, sorry, W i2 i1. So, how do I do it? I say my error. My error is What's my error? Target value at i2 minus y at i2, right? Whole square, summation over i2, and summation over all the data points, right? All the data points which I have. This is just one data point, but I'll have multiple data points. Summation over all the multiple data points. This is the form. Now, gradient descent means I have to find do e upon do some w whichever w it is let us say let us work with i1 i2 let us first try to estimate the values of i1 i2 what will that be it will be equal to summation over all n summation over i2 can i say summation over i2 okay so good source of error so, because i2 is also dummy variable here and i1 also will be dummy variable inside this, so I won't call this as i1 i2. I will call it call this as, uh, let us say, i1 dash i2 dash. 
is this clear because my i1 i2 are also dummy variables here i don't want to because these i1 and I, this i1 i2 is one instance of those uh, i1 or i2 like let's say if this is uh, when i1 is equal to 0 i2 is equal to 0 right so this is particular value that's why i denoted by dash okay then can i say summation over i2 no because i2 is taking all the values from 0 to n to minus 1 and one of those values is i2 dash right so i cannot say i2 so that term won't come here this will come uh, this will be twice of t i2 minus y i2 right into with a minus sign into derivative of y i2 with respect to w i1 i2 dash both dash right now what is my y i2 in terms of w i1 i2 it is this one uh, consider this form it will be easier uh, let me write it down here so my y i2 is equal to w i1 i2 times v i1 summation over all i1 right assume that i have assimilated that uh, bias term also in this by taking one of the v as one okay so now what is my do y i2 by do w i1 dash i2 dash it is simply v i1 dash right so this thing is simply v i1 dash so see now my derivative has taken a, such a simple form can i compute v i1 dash from my input Yes, right. Because in this network, given a sample with these values, and if I am given the Ws which I initialize randomly, right? My Ws are initialized randomly, so I can do a forward pass. What is the meaning of forward pass? You compute the values in the forward direction. A forward pass, which means given this, you progressively compute layer by layer what are h what are v what is y so when you given your x what is your y that is called the forward pass okay so now given this now you know the values of h the with the current values of w's you know the values of v with the current w you know the value of y with the current w so you compute everything with the current w w I one basically not just I one I two everything, all the values of W. I will write it as a vector to say that okay this is. Uh, so, given uh, the current value, right? And then I have uh, I can compute this term, which is my do do e upon do W, and then I can I can say my W i1 i2 dash uh, the new is equal to w i1 i2 dash the old minus eta times do e upon do w i1 i2 dash computed at w old Okay, every basically all the w's is this point clear this is simple gradient descent uh, by choosing a learning parameter you can compute these uh, you can compute the update to your old values in this way you can update for all i1 dash and i2 dash right um, so we'll continue from here in the next class